Mm. There's, uh, the problem is that, um, oh, wait a minute. There we are. Um, that we are still having a traditional teaching method and um, uh, the main uh, focus is on correct language. Mm? And uh, remember that we will never be 100% accurate, not even in our mother tongue, but we are asking our students to be accurate, to use correct language. Uh, that's why they are afraid of uh, participating in class. So they uh, prefer to remain silent uh, instead of um, being actively involved in the process of learning. And this is a big mistake because we should, we should encourage them to, uh, to become active, um, uh, active participants, but because that's the way of improving the language. Um, so, um, they, they complain because they say that it is difficult for them to understand authentic language. Well, today we need to remember that, uh, that English is used as an international language. This means that there are more non-native speakers than native speakers. So this has given rise to a variety of accents. And today the main aim is to help students understand speakers of English around the world. That's why they need exposure. They need to become familiar with the type of English we're having at the moment. Remember that in the traditional model, the students are, uh, are expected to understand um, an English speaker, but today um, they are likely to meet speakers of English around the world, not specifically English people. That's why we need to redirect our teaching aims and give the students what they really need in order to become effective communicators. Remember, we do not need perfect writers or perfect speakers. We need effective users of English. Um, well, there are several problems that should be taken into account. First of all, besides the fact that we need to consider that English is an international language, uh, listening um, uh, is not um, present in a systematic way in the process of teaching. Let's say uh, it's not uh, integrated uh, um, in the process. And we should remember that listening is a foundational skill and it forms the basis from which all the other's abilities are developed. For this reason, we need to redirect uh, the, um, the macro abilities and consider that listening is the skill and then all the others. Um, if we pay attention to the way um, we learn English, we learn uh, the mother tongue. For example, a babies in our mother tongue, what do they do? Do they start speaking the language when they are young? No, they spend around a year listening to the language. They listen to their parents. Eh? And after a year, they are able to start speaking. But what happens when we uh, want to learn a foreign or a second language? Listening is reduced and listening is first. So this is one of the most important problems. Uh, problems. That's why we need to reorganize uh, uh, the order of uh, the abilities. Um, Another important uh, uh, problem we can see uh, in, in our teaching is that listening is evaluated but not taught. What a paradox. So uh, that's why the students find uh, listening activities so difficult because when they are listening to a recorded text, they don't know what to do because they haven't got the necessary strategies. So, so what, they, what they do is to concentrate on every single word. And in so doing, they, they cannot interpret what is being said because the brain can process chunks, sequences, meaningful sequences of words. It cannot process individual words. So listening activities are very difficult for our students today because we are not giving them what they really need to become effective communicators. What else? Another problem we are having uh, in this type of teaching is that um, speaking 
and listening are not taught together. And they are interdependent because when we are communicating, we are speaking and listening all the time. So the focus is on production and the receptive side of, um, uh, of communication is ignored. That's why it is called the Cinderella skill. For this reason, we need to um, uh, redirect um, our teaching uh, procedure and give the students what they really need. And from experience, I can tell you when that when you start teaching uh, English in this way, the, the results can be seen immediately because the students are able to recognize their own improvement. Okay, um, so when we consider uh, speaking and listening together, what the students need is the development of communication skills hmm? so as to be able to understand and be understood. For this, they, they need to, uh, to get communicative competence. That is to say, the ability to understand and be understood. So when the students have this type of strategies, uh, their communication changes completely. They become more confident because they know that they, they are able to use the language um, more effectively. The thing is that when um, uh, we ask teachers about the type of um, communication activities that are present in the classroom, um, uh, often they consider that given, giving a summary or answering questions given by the teachers themselves to the students um, are examples of communication. Well, let me tell you that this is not communication because communication really takes place when we are having a conversation, when there is an exchange of ideas and thoughts. Giving a summary is something static. The students uh, tend to repeat like a parrot uh, because what we are doing here, we are checking their grammar, we are checking their language, mm? but we are not considering how the students are able to communicate when they are, uh, yes, you want to ask a question, Irina? Uh, yes, I would like just to clarify, are we still on the first slide or you are moving forward? No, not yet, because now I have to bear some questions for, no, no, yes, I, I, I'll tell you when I, I go to the second slide. Huh? Thank you for, 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 for asking. Well, um, the idea is that, uh, as I was saying, when the students uh, practice the language in the classroom, remember that we are teaching students how to become effective users of, of English, not perfect writers or perfect speakers. Eh? So uh, communication activities should be present. Of course, that um, uh, retelling a story is important, but the, 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 com the communication um, uh, practice is usually reduced. Well, um, it is important to consider this phrase, being a good listener is one of the best ways to be a good communicator. Um, what does it mean? Well, that when we are listening, we need to take into consideration the meaning of the words and also the meaning behind the words. Because when we are speaking, we are not just expressing words. Huh? Our intention is to go beyond that. Today, we are going to discover that. Okay, now let's go to the second. Oh, I cannot move it. Uh, here we are. Well, now we need to connect the, uh, to, to connect the dots. And for that, um, I want to ask you three questions. Hmm? And uh, in this first one, you will write in the chat box, yes or no, okay? What's the skill of listening talk to you when you started learning English? I mean, were you given the, the necessary strategies uh, to be used when, when listening? Yes or no? You will tell me, Irina, the answers, please. Some of them. Uh, and yes, and no, 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 yes, no. Well, normally is the answer is no. I was no. not taught that when I was young. Uh, the next generation was not taught either. And at present, if we are still following this traditional method, uh, these uh, strategies uh, are not taught. Okay, uh, number two. Which of the four macro abilities, speaking, listening, reading, and writing, is used as the learning tool in the process of learning English? That is to say, what is the most usual activity that is present in our classrooms today? Right? You can write the initial letter only so as to save time. 
writing, reading, speaking. Well, normally, according to, uh, to service uh, here in Argentina, the, the, the usual activity is writing, because normally we prepare the students for writing, not for speaking, hmm? because the students um, have classwork, uh, written classwork at, uh, in the classroom. They have homework, written homework. Uh, they have summaries. So most of the tests are usually written. Hmm? And, so and the, the exams are in written form. Sorry? And the exams are in written form. Yes, so we give more importance to written exams. What about oral? If we are teaching the students how to communicate, and communication is normally oral, and the first means of communication is oral. That's why at the beginning I, I, I talked about redirecting eh, the, the teaching process. Okay, and finally, what is listening in communication? Understanding words, receiving language through the ears, or interpreting the, the said and the unsaid, right? A, B, or C. C. Irina, which is the usual C. answer? C. 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 The, the, the third one. All right. Yes. Well, this is uh, the, the, the one uh, we should take into consideration. What is said? And what is not said and sometimes the unsaid is much more powerful than the words themselves all right now um why do we need a new methodology um this new model focuses on a process approach not on the outcome today what is important uh, following the traditional model um the important aspect is the results for that, uh, if we concentrate on the process, we need to give the students strategic instruction. They need the strategies so that they will be able to select which are important for the listening they are having at the moment. And of course, metacognitive awareness, because when they discover the type of strategies they have to use, they are able to select which are the most appropriate for a specific conversation they are having. Okay, what are the barriers we are having at the moment? Well, English is taught in a fantasy land, as I said before, because the emphasis is on correct language, on accuracy, and there is little ex exposure. Hmm? Uh, and usually the, the, the exposure um, that is present is a careful speech. Of course, that the material should be graded, but um, sometimes the, the material that is offered by textbook is so careful that it is completely distorted from the connected speech that is normally produced in authentic language. Um, then, um, for this type of methodology, the traditional one, listening is passive, and we know that it is not passive, it is active. And when we teach with this new methodology, uh, listening becomes a multisensory experience. This means that when we are listening, we are not only using our ears, we are using our eyes and we are using our hearts. Mm? And we should remember that 55% uh, of what we say is expressed through body language, 38% eh? through tone of voice, and only 7% is restricted to words. So the, at the moment, the students are missing very important information that can help them interpret what is being said. Um, in order to become a multisensory experience, the students need to use perceptive skills. Perception is the, um, uh, the sensory experience they have of the world, in this case of, list, of listening, hmm? because we are using our senses and our bodies to understand what is being said. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> um, the focus should be on the process. Normally, the type of activities that are given today um, uh, focus on um, on the product, on the outcome, but we, we never know how the students arrive at a particular answer. Hmm? And normally it is a question of guessing. Hmm? They just choose <laughs> which answer could be the most appropriate. Okay, um, in order to understand this new methodology, uh, we need to consider communication. Communication, remember, that includes both speaking and listening. Therefore, they form a binomial and they cannot be separated. Mm? Uh, we need to, to teach our students production and reception. 
And if we consider our daily communication, 45% of our time is devoted to listening and 30% 30, uh, 30 to speaking and the rest to reading and writing. So you see that we are speaking, we are uh, listening and hearing all the time, but we are not speaking all the time. We speak only when it is necessary. So although listening is the most frequently used skill, um, it is not developed hmm, when students need to learn a foreign language, not even in our mother tongue, because um, uh, we are never told the, the, the strategies that should be used to listen actively, for example, not even in our mother tongue. And you know that active listening is crucial in the process of learning. So when the students are taught this type of listening, this, uh, uh, this new type of skill will be useful, not only for, uh, for, for, for learning, but for their own lives, for their everyday life. Now, what does communication include? It includes verbal language, that is to say the words that we use for communication, and at the same time, these words are accompanied by non-verbal language. Non-verbal language includes uh, paralinguistic information, that is to say uh, prosody, rhythm and intonation, and the tone of voice. And um, uh, also unspoken communication, what we express through our bodies. And non-verbal language is very important because the same uh, the same uh, sequence of words may have a different meaning according to the way I'm using my uh, nonverbal language. I'm going to give you an example. Um, suppose that you say to me, what do you think about this? And I say, I don't believe you. So uh, my body language and my face expression is indicating that I don't care. The same question, and I say, I don't believe you. <laughs> so I, I'm angry. I'm angry because eh, I know that you are not telling me the truth. And finally, the same question, and I say, I, I don't believe you. Well, I'm very sad, you know, because you are lying to me. And I'm always using the same sequence of words. So the power of nonverbal language should be present uh, when we are teaching English to our students because they need to express what they are saying with their bodies, with their emotions. That's why drama is so important. Okay, now, um, we need to take into consideration what are the, the, the issues eh, uh, teaching oral communication. First of all, the place of pronunciation. Eh? You know that pronunciation uh, hasn't got a systematic place in the process of teaching. Eh? It is together with, with the rest. Eh? It is like the process of osmosis. And whenever pronunciation is seated, we concentrate on individual words. And this is a big mistake because uh, we do not speak in individual words. Words are placed in connected speech. So whenever a correction is necessary, it should be placed there in the chain of speech. Why? Because you know that when we are speaking, there are certain uh, modifications that the students need to know for receptive purposes because they are not supposed to use all these modifications. That's why exposure is so important. Uh, then um, we need to take into account um, accuracy and fluency. Well, both of them are very important uh, in, in language learning, but we need to prioritize. Uh, do we want um, uh, grammatically, um, phonologically uh, perfect language, or do we need fluent speech? Well, a balance here is important, but remember that if we are teaching our students uh, to communicate effectively, fluency is important. And sometimes we are so concentrated on the grammar the, the students are using, eh, so accuracy becomes much more important than fluency. A another important um, issue is the affective factor. We need to remember that we are teaching students to become um, effective users of a language they are not familiar with. For this reason, we need to create a special atmosphere which is safe, warm, and uh, that is inviting the students to learn. Hmm? Remember that um, uh, we need to create 
uh, a positive relationship with our students. Mm? This means that we need to build rapport so that the students become confident enough and they are able to participate because they know that the teacher is supportive, approachable, and uh, she's not so obsessed with mistakes. <clears throat> um, and, and another important issue is the interaction um, factor. Well, you know that uh, interactions are not uh, very frequently used in the classroom because remember the, 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 the oral activities that are usually present. In general, I'm, I'm speaking in general because I know that there are teachers uh, who are using uh, interactions, uh, but the thing is that <clears throat> interaction should be given a specific place in every class so that the students have the opportunity to, um, to express their ideas and thoughts and to assess their own language. Remember that they should be able to construct their own knowledge. Remember that today we should concentrate on the teaching process. That's why we need to give them all the necessary tools to be able to reflect on their own learning and to make the necessary adjustments uh, in order to become effective uh, communicators. So when the students are engaged uh, in, in different types of interactions, they need to use conversation devices. Conversation devices are not taught and they are crucial. Why? Because when we are having a conversation, there is a lot of negotiation. Conversation is negotiation. Why? Because permanently we are trying to understand and be understood. Um, these conversation devices are normally present. Why? Because when we are speaking, there are pauses, there are false starts, um, um, uh, uh, there are misunderstandings. So um, we tend to ask for repetitions, for further explanations, reformulations. So the students need to know how um, these types of devices should be used in order to keep a conversation going. Well, <clears throat> um, what makes <clears throat> Uh, speaking and listening difficult. First of all, let me tell you, and afterwards in the reflection time, uh, you will be able to tell me your, uh, your impression about this. Usually students do not learn the language through their ears. They learn it through their eyes because they are usually much more familiar with the written form of the language. Mm? That's why they tend to have this choppy way of speaking mm? because they follow the written pattern. In, in writing, the words are separated. Mm? So they uh, tend to say, <clears throat> for example, there were some students in the classroom. No, it's not like that. Mm? When you start telling the students which words are important in this sequence, mm? you know that there are words that are more important than others. So remember that you need to concentrate only on those words which are important. So they will immediately say, well, yes, uh, students and classroom. Okay, good. So what you need to do in this sequence that contains seven words, highlight only two, the rest is forgotten because they are used for linking. So when the students understand this type of process, they save time, they concentrate on what is important and comprehension is enhanced, as simple as that. So the students, so listen to me. So I provide example, there were seven students in the classroom. So which words are highlighted? Which words are higher in my, in my utterance? Uh, students and classroom. Mm? So gradually through exposure, they realize that the language works like that when it is used. <clears throat> well, um, for this reason, we need to highlight the fact that uh, speaking becomes from listening. Mm? I have already said that listening is a foundational skill mm? and listening is key to fluency, is key to speaking is, is key to improve comprehension. Um, another difficulty is um, simplifications eh, in connected speech. We know that there are different types of reductions. They are uh, phonetic, morphological, syntactic, and pragmatic. Mm? And uh, when the students are exposed to the language, they gradually start finding differences between what they say in the classroom and what is produced in authentic natural speech. 
So these type of activities, when they start being exposed to the language and they detect this, this can work as a sort of activity. Okay, tell me about this. For example, I have heard that the speaker said one pound, not one pound. Well, and this natural, this is a simulation, right? And um, normally when we produce this, we say one pound, right? So then they start checking themselves the way they pronounce the sequences and they start realizing that some sequences occur naturally. Well, um, usually I normally make a comparison uh, between um, chunking, that is say um, uh, division segments in speech and a bar of chocolate. Um, a bar of chocolate is divided into pieces and speech is also divided into pieces. We, we call these pieces segments, breath groups, thought groups, tone units. Well, there is a variety uh, of names that we can use to refer them. The thing is that we do not speak in individual words. We speak in chunks. That's why we cannot accept this choppy way of speaking because when you might have noticed that when a speaker has this way of speaking it is difficult to understand what he means mm. eh? why because the, the, the brain remember uh, can process meaningful sequences of sounds and when we speak like that it is difficult to see what is um, uh, what is meaningful what is important mm? so when the student discover that we need to speak in chunks, remember speaking and li uh, listening, both of them are um, phrasal. When they discover this, they concentrate only on those words which are important. Um, another difficulty is that here, rhythm and intonation are not taken into account. The problem is that they are usually considered as untouchables and untouchables does not mean unlearnable. If you present a simple way of introducing these two into the, uh, into the classroom, you will see that the students will understand this very easily. Mm? There is no, no need for a specific terminology, just modeling, just showing them how they are used. Rhythm is related to stress. Stress is uh, what we find in the dictionary. Eh? It belongs to the language. It cannot be changed. And it is concerned with which words are, are important and uh, those words which are not. And intonation is related to accent. Accent belongs to the speaker. Eh? I'm the owner of this highlighting because depending on the meaning I want to convey, I will change the, uh, the accent. But uh, remember that I cannot change um, stress. For example, if I look up the word appear, I notice that the stress is on the second syllable. I cannot say apia, right? That can't be changed because it belongs to the language, but accent is mine. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, suppose that you are going <clears throat> to the park and you're about to leave and I say, oh, I want to go. Hmm? So I'm highlighting I, hmm? depending on the context, I may say, I want to go to. Oh, I want to go. You see, I'm changing eh, the accent or the highlighting in order to convey meaning. Don't forget about what I told you. I want to go too. So in this way, the, the, the students are able to express um, what they mean more dynamically eh, and they are more meaningful when uh, they use um, this type of highlighting. Well, um, how can the students improve their listening skills? First of all, they need to know that it is an active process. It is not passive. Hmm? And when they are listening, three, uh, three main uh, processes are present. We are listening to the words. We are interpreting the meaning of the words. And at the same time, we are recognizing the tone of voice and the body language uh, that are accompanying the words. That is, remember that when we are speaking, each word has, each meaningful word has um, an emotional load. Remember the example I gave you, okay? Well, depending on the emotions I add to my speech, the meaning will change. That's why um, um, listening 
mm, is a multisensory experience because I'm using the senses. Why? Because I need to interpret that emotional load that is present. And also I need to pay attention to look at your facial expressions and um, body language. The students need to know that it is a key skill in communication and exposure is, uh, is crucial. And at the heart of learning a language is listening. First, we need to listen to a language before we are able to speak it. We are doing just the other way around. That's why the students take time uh, to start speaking the language. Although they have been studying the language for years, this is what they say, and we can notice that this is happening. That's why it is important to change uh, the methodology. Well, um, listening serves as an oral input, um, which forms the basis for uh, language acquisition and language learning and exposure, remember, is crucial. When the students learn English in this way and, um, and they discover that listening is active, they develop intelligibility, that is to say, understanding uh, the pronunciation of the words, comprehensibility, understand the meaning of the words, and uh, uh, interpretability, the purpose, of the speaker, what he means by saying that. So the three processes are performed together. In this way, uh, listening becomes a holistic experience. Isn't it great? Eh? We have been ignoring this information for ages, and now we realize that when we are using this, everything changes, changes completely. Well, what are the strategies that we need to use? Well, th these are the ones that are, are familiar to us, eh? bottom up, and top-down processes. Um, what is new is in red, because bottom-up uh, strategies are normally used in our classrooms. But the thing is that we are not uh, giving further explanation to the students. Identify these words, identify these phonemes, but that's the end of the story. So part of the information is missing. That's why the students are not able to use the strategies that you are practicing when you give this type of activities. First of all, when the students start learning the language, when they are eight, they need to know that there are two types of words, structure words and content words. And we should insist that we need to concentrate on those words which carry meaning, content words, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, etc. Mm? <clears throat> and they need to know that the structure words are used for linking. And sometimes, depending on the meaning of what is being said, they may become um, highlighted. For example, I can swim. What did you think? Be careful. Huh? Let's go to the swim. To, uh, let's go to the to the swimming pool together, right? If I want to expand the idea. So normally, see, yeah, I can swim. I can swim. Which is the most important there? Swim, the action. But when I say, mind you, I can swim. I'm changing the meaning. I'm expressing that I'm um, I, I'm showing my my ability. Eh? Swimming is my ability. Well, so depending on the highlighting, I may give uh, a structure word importance, meaning. Then recognizing essential and superficial features in connected speech. Remember that we need to present the language in connected speech so that the students will become familiar with, with the chunks and with the musicality that is present, this highlighting that, that is present. I call it a roller coaster effect eh? because the students discover that when the words are higher, they are important. When the words are um, um, lower, this means that they are not important. So forget about that. Eh? Concentrate on those which are higher, which are essential. Well, phonemic distinctions, um, stress, eh? which words are important, and highlighting. Hmm? And, um, what, what is uh, superficial? Well, superficial, weak forms, um, um, structure words, and simplifications, because they do not bring about any changing meaning. That's why they are not important. Then, uh, identifying reduced forms uh, of words and phrases. Mm? Uh, the simplifications I mentioned before, uh, some minutes ago. And then recognizing sound sequences, thought groups, uh, rhythm patterns and intonation contours. That is to say, when they discover that we speak in chunks and in each chunk we find one or two meaningful words, this is enough because they discover how to listen better. And today I'm going to show you a few examples 
that are key to understand how this works. And the students can understand this perfectly well because I'm using this methodology with, with my students and they can see their own progress. They are the best judges because they can evaluate their own progress. And this is great because when they find that something is not working, this means that I need to change my strategies. Okay, when I use top-down um, uh, strategies, well, normally are the ones that are present in our listening activities and they are also used in reading, huh? listening for main ideas, connecting ideas, making inferences, etc. What is new is the interpretation of, of nonverbal cues. Remember eh, that 93% of what we say is given by, by nonverbal language. So it is important to give students this information because it may help them to understand much better. Well, whenever I start my listening practice, I bring my toolbox. This toolbox is full of activities, eh, full of procedures, full of techniques. And um, they are very useful because um, uh, when, we, when I open this toolbox, uh, I can deal with content and structure words in connected speech. They, the students discover chunking, the meaning behind the words, because they are using highlighting. Of course, that the processes that are uh, using all the time are bottom up and top down. And for the type of activities that are normally used, the activity is drama. Why? Because drama is the only resource that provides students with communication um, uh, activities. That is to say, the, 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 the only resource that helps the students develop communication skills. Why? Because normally all the activities include role plays and um, uh, the students practice verbal and nonverbal language. And of course, uh, when I'm using drama, the, the classroom becomes a laboratory where the students experiment with language. There is a lot of trial and error. And mistakes are welcome because the students need to know that it is, a, it is not bad to commit mistakes. They are important because they are part of the process. Everybody commits mistakes. Hmm? Even teachers, uh, we commit mistakes and we need to recognize those mistakes that they are part of the, part of the process. And for this reason, when they recognize that mistakes are important, we are using, we need to use metacognition. When the students are given metacognitive strategies, they discover that they can um, assess their own process of learning. They identify what is working and what is not working. And they are in this way, they are able to improve their own learning. Mm -hmm. Remember that one of our most important aims is to help them to become independent learners. So, Metacognition is the instrument, in the instrument that can help them become independent. Okay, I have brought three activities for you to know how this works. How this works. Uh, the first activity is listen out loud. For this, you need to prepare. Um, uh, you need to, to, to select a, a dialogue according to the level of your students. You prepare handouts for all your students. Each of them has one. And you tell them that they will listen to this three times. Mm? Um, in the first uh, listening, they become familiar with it. They understand what the dialogue is about. And in the second, you tell them, OK, you will underline those words which are important for you. Mm? Um, and in the third, uh, they check their choices. Um, before starting, you can revise uh, the difference between content and structure words because the aim of this activity is to concentrate on um, this the difference, mm, which is crucial for them. Well, once the students have checked <coughs> their choices, you provide the right version. Mm. And this is amazing, really, because this dialogue contains 62 words and only 26 are important. So when they discover this, oh, so I need to concentrate only on 26 words. This is really great. Hmm? Because when they listen to the recorded version or you read it to them, you say, how are you doing today? Good, thanks for asking. What can I do for you? So you see that uh, you are permanently highlighting those words which are important. And they know that when they are highlighted, they are important. Hmm? Okay. Uh, this is another activity which focuses on highlighting. Eh? And remember that highlighting is key in speech. Um, uh, in this activity, 
the same answer is given. <clears throat> what changes is the, the type of question. So depending on the type of question, the, uh, the, the speaker will react. For example, why are you angry? You never helped me, help me. You never helped me, you see? So what is highlighted? The action, hmm? because of the question. People always help you. You never helped me, you see? So you, in this case, is highlighting, is highlighted. I always help you. You never help me. Sorry, I always help people. You never help me. You see? So highlighting varies according to the type of conversation we are having. Let's try the second. Nobody was listening to me. What would you say? Nobody was listening. I'm worried. Nobody was listening to me. What would you say? Which of the three words? I was listening. I was listening. I was listening. What would you choose? I was listening. Very good. I was listening. Come on. The second. What were you doing? I what was listening. Doing? Very good. I was listening. Pay attention. Come on. <laughs> why, why, why weren't you listening? I was listening. Uh, very good. You see, so it comes out naturally. Hmm? That's why I have selected these uh, activities because they are key to show how this uh, methodology, methodology really works. And finally, charm detector. Uh, remember that the students do not know that we do not speak in individual words. So this type of activity may help the students improve this way of speaking. So you prepare a set of sentences and uh, you provide uh, the, um, the limits, um, the boundaries, right? Each student has a copy and um, you tell, okay, why don't you highlight or underline those words which are important? <clears throat> After they do that, you read it to them. Hmm? Uh, you read the first, the first as an example, and uh, they realize that those words that have been underlined are the ones that are important, and consequently, they are meaningful. She does not like the pictures you took at the party. She does not like the pictures you took at the party. So you see, eh? When you read like that and you highlight sequences, the students start understanding perfectly well. And this is what uh, um, English speakers do, because sometimes we are affected by negative transfer. Eh? Our mother tongue eh, is influencing us. Um, and remember that um, accent is another component of our speech. We will never be perfect speakers of English because we were not born in Britain, remember. Eh? We speak English with an accent. In my case, it is, um, I speak English with a Spanish accent, but it is not uh, the accent that is spoken in Spain. It is the one that is spoken in Argentina, right? So um, each speaker around the world speaks English using his own accent. Remember that accent is a linguistic identity. Hmm? Okay, well, let's go on with this. Um, the students then go on doing the same and the teacher provides the example and they uh, realize that reading in this way or producing sequences in this way, in this way is very useful because they are able to detect which words are important and the rest are forgotten. As, uh, as uh, a follow-up activity, you can prepare another set, but now without boundaries. Eh? Uh, this can be given as homework, the students decide together. Remember that they need to work together first because learning is a social process. Hmm? They, can, they need to help each other first before being able to do uh, something individually, right? Um, well, they provide the boundaries, they provide the, the important words, and uh, without uh, um, giving you an example of the, of the new set, let them be the first to read the sequences. Let's see what they do. Mm -hmm. And when they are using metacognitive strategies, they, they start reflecting on the way they have read it and um, making the necessary distinctions if there are differences um, among the, 
the, the choices uh, the other students have made. Well, concluding, um, listening actively is a body, heart, and mind workout. This means that listening is a superpower that provides the students with superpowers. Hmm? And um, this means that whole body listening hmm, takes place when the eyes are watching, the ears are listening, the mouth is closed, the, the brain is processing the information it is receiving, and the heart is caring about the emotional load present in the words. So when the students discover that there is a holistic way of interpreting what is being heard, they realize that um, a lot of information, meaningful information, <clears throat> may help them improve their, um, their listening skills. So I invite you to start working in this way, give it a try, uh, I think that the most important aspect of this is to step outside the comfort zone and start trying different uh, strategies because the students really will tell you if they are really working or not. Mm? And remember that metacognitive strategies mm, um, uh, are very important because the students become active observers of their own practice. Mm? And this um, <clears throat> observation in the classroom is useful, not only between um, teacher and students, but also students, teachers, and uh, students and peers. Mm? Well, um, this is the, the, the end of my presentation. Now, uh, this is the question and answer session. And I would like you to ask me any questions related to this. Tell me if you have, uh, uh, enjoyed this presentation. If you have questions or whatever you would like to, to ask me, I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Well. What, what's the connection between Cinderella and the listening skills? All right, yes. Well, um, the idea is that uh, this was created, well, the first who mentioned um, the term Cinderella for listening was Newnan. He was the first. And then researchers wanted to know um, um, how listening was studied hmm? um, after this uh, international character of English. This was at the beginning uh, or uh, some years before the 21st century. Uh, they, they did this research on the net and they discovered that um, very little information was devoted to listening. Mm? So um, most of, of the articles were devoted to writing. Mm? Today we have, uh, we are uh, in the year uh, 2021, and there is a lot of information about listening. But are we, are, as we are still having this traditional model, uh, it is not fully used. We have very important researchers and authors. We have Richard Cordwell, we have Judy Gilbert, um, we have um, um, John Field. They have written books about this and they are really very interesting. Well, uh, why Cinderella? Because listening is like the character in the story. Eh? She is ignored by her stepsisters. Hmm? And she's not taken into account in the in the um, in the house. This means that <clears throat> listening is having um, this uh, this same this same characteristic. It is ignored. It is, it is not taken into account. Poor listening, you know. That's why we are responsible for placing listening in its right place and start considering the importance it has in order to improve. Uh, uh, the communication skills of our 